Yo, what is going on guys? It is Jazz here, back with another video, and it is time to do Fazbear Fright Week, and today we're gonna be doing the first one, Blackbird. So, whew, this story was pretty, pretty good, I have to admit that. Um, if I had rated probably a 8 out of 10, um, definitely a very interesting chapter indeed. But yeah, so... Blackbird is the first chapter in this book, and then later on we're going to be doing the real Jake, and then hide and seek as well. So yeah, um, before we get into it, I'm just going to do non-spoilers right now. Actually, no, we're not going to do that. Um, but yeah, without, you know, without spoiling anything, I'm going to say this was a really good chapter. Um, there were some intense parts, like, I mean, kind of intense parts, it was also a little confusing as well, but kind of later on I did understand what happened but yeah let's go ahead and get on to the story now if you guys do or actually yeah the, this is going to be a spoiler warning so if you guys do not want spoilers um then I highly recommend you guys read the chapter first but um if you just want to listen to it that's completely fine but yeah let's go ahead and get into the story so the main characters for this chapter is Noel and Sam and Noel and Sam are two college kids who are doing like this film type of thing. Like they're trying to think of what, so one of the projects in their classes is a horror movie. Now, like I said, they're in a film class and they just got, okay, um, our new assignment is gonna be, you know, this horror theme type of movie. And so they're thinking about, oh, it needs to be bloody. There's gonna be a lot of blood, but then a lot of people are, you know, choosing a lot of it, a lot of it like that. So yeah, they think that blood is not a good idea considering that they're gonna be using a lot of it. So, Noel decides on this. Do you remember Freddy Fazbear's Pizza? And Sam said, you know, sure, why? And they said that there's, you know, a creepy animatronic or they can get like some sort of idea for that. So they're coming up with an idea of like having their own, you know, type of Freddy Fazbear animatronic, considering that they both know that those animatronics are creepy in the first place. And they're trying to think of a type of bird. Now, they said not a chick, cause you know, obviously Chica the chicken. Um, and they have an idea of a goose, a raven, a crow, and then they get to the idea of Blackbird. So, yep, that's where this chapter goes into play. And what makes this character interesting is that Blackbird, hold on, let me um, go ahead and, yeah, let me go ahead and read you this part. Our animatronic, the Blackbird. Sam gave the name, name finger quotes. We'll get you to confess your darkest secrets, and then when you do, it comes to punish you for your sins. It'll never let you off the hook. Never let you rest. So, basically, you tell your secret, Blackbird is like, yep, I'm gonna haunt you for the rest of my life, <laughs> pretty much. So the next part, they basically, um, you know, they're just having like a pizza and then they see, you know, one of their classmates, Amber, and you know, it's just, it's just a lot of filler, uh, you know, for this part, I'm just gonna make the fill, you know, parts of like the filler, just like a short, simple, sweet little uh, thing, but they see Amber at a restaurant, they're talking, they're talking about what their film's gonna be about, Amber's film, I think it does say that it's going to be, like, have, oh yeah, it does say they're going to have blood in it, and yeah, they're just talking about what the projects are going to basically be. So later on, Sam gets to his house. Now, it does say he does live a little close to the college that they're at, and the basement that Sam has is like his own little film studio, and his parents basically was like, you know what, you know, since you're going to basically be doing this, um, we'll have, you know, let you have your little area so, you know, you could do your film projects. And Sam gets directly to making the costume. Now he makes, like, you know, black fe like the black feathers. Now, Sam and Noel are pretty tall, okay? So, and they decide that, you know, Sam is going to be the person who's going to be in the costume. And basically, Sam's going to be the person who's going to be playing the Blackbird. Here, Sam finished you know, put the finishing touches on it. He did not recognize himself whenever he saw the costume, like at all. All you saw was this guy right here. Like nothing of Elsa Sam, just this. 
So the next day, Sam and Noel are at their film studio, you know, trying to build um, what their, I guess, design is. And then, you know, during the conversation, Sam asks Noel of what Noel's deepest, darkest secret is. And, oh, he says it's a dark secret. And basically, Noel was a bully and a ruthless bully as what he puts it. All right, so basically, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and describe this. Um, Noel bullied this girl um, because, you know, she was, you know, completely different, you know, from the other girls, which whenever I read that part, I literally felt so bad for, you know, the girl that uh, Noel was talking about because it's not a right thing to do to bully someone. It's really not the right thing to do. And whenever I read that part, I was like, Noel, just why? But yeah, he just, he basically describes, you know, um, what he's done to her. And it's just, what he just said was absolutely awful. And um, the whole time Sam was not happy with what Noel was saying because he also got made fun of you know, for, you know, because Sam was tall and he, he, he got bullied for that, which is just completely, completely awful. And Sam was not happy of the way that Noel was like talking to him, basically. So after that, Noel asked him, it's like, hey, are you okay, dude? And then Sam was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm just going to call it for a day. And, you know, they, they went back like they went their separate ways. So another piece of filler, Noel goes to a frat party and literally all he can think about is, you know, what. So it's just a lot of filler, the next part. It's just that, you know, Sam just goes to a Noel party, or not Sam, but Noel goes to a uh, frat party and, you know, he's just, you know, talking to his friends and stuff. So the next day, Noel goes to the studio, you know, waiting for Sam, but Sam never comes. But Amber called Noel and said, have you heard of the news about Sam? And he said, and then Amber said, Sam is basically missing. So he went to the location where Sam was at and basically he got hit by a train. And Sam's parents are there, everyone is there, but Noel finds a track of feathers because he was wearing his Blackbird costume. Um, you know, so that way they can shoot it, uh, like, you know, shoot their movie, because, you know, Sam was bringing, of course, the costume. <laughs> so in the next couple of hours, Noel is, you know, just thinking to himself, this is all my fault, that, you know, Sam is missing, and he goes to the cafeteria, he meets Amber, and, you know, they just have a little conversation, you know, about what just happened, and, whew, when I read this part on page 34, Oh boy, let me let me read it to you guys. Noel stopped just outside the doors of the cafeteria and stared down the hall. He looked the other way too, and then he turned to look behind him. He rubbed his eyes and checked the area again. Nothing was out of the ordinary. Dirty beige floor, pale yellow walls, posters vying for space, and an overcrowded bulletin board that ran along the wall. A few sto students strolling in and out of the cafeteria. Nothing to see here, folks. Yeah, so why was so why was Noel sure he just spotted something big and black flutter along the corner at the end of the hall? Hmm. That guy right there. Hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> so one of his friends is like, hey, are you okay? And he's like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just going to go to the... And then, yeah, he's saying he's fine. And then he's just going to go to his room. So he goes back to his room and he's thinking, okay, what, you know, what in the world just happened? And literally he saw a blackbird or whatever thing he, oh, well, pretty much it's the blackbird anyway, but he literally was seeing the thing, uh, literally four times. That, that's what it said. And, ooh, it, it gets, it gets interesting. So, so he keeps like hearing noises, like it says, like, you know, fluttering noises and thinks that this thing is toying with him which is odd and then he's just like you know looking around his room and then he sees something pass his window and just like okay this is getting stupid like what the heck's going on so he thinks that sam is stalking noel and because of the whole thing you know that noel was talking about 
you know, how, you know, Noel is a bully and he thinks that Noel, you know, Noel thinks that he deserves, you know, what's happened to him or something like that. So later on, Amber calls, you know, Noel again, you know, about Sam and basically, you know, Amber is just, you know, being a good friend, you know, checking out Noel because, you know, of how crazy this is for him and yeah, so basically, if you know, they're just talking about the situation. Then he decides to go to bed now, or just like rest in bed. But listen to this. This is this what makes the story good. At first, sleep wouldn't come. Noel's muscles wouldn't let go. They were so taunt they could have been strung on a guitar and plucked if they'd been plucked. Noel was sure they sound dissonant. There was no question he was out of tune. Noel tried closing his eyes. Sleep began to take him, and as soon as it did, image of impossible huge wings scraped against his lids. Then he felt gigantic feathers battering against his entire body. He was being pummeled by stiff elbow length feathers. He could feel them drub against the skin in an eerie contrast of soft versus hard. How could something as light as a feather beat him with such force and power? Fear pushed Sleep from his consciousness. His eyes shot open. <laughs> so he's like okay what was this a dream like what, what the heck is going on so you know he gets a water bottle and you know he drinks it and he's gonna you know try to go to sleep again so as soon as noel tries to go to sleep he hears something come out of his door and nothing was there at all so he's like okay you're just being an idiot so just go back to sleep he couldn't he couldn't go back to sleep afterwards, so, you know, he decides to, you know, check, you know, the area with his flashlight, and when he thinks he sees something, it's not there, and it's like, oh, what, what the heck? Like, what? <laughs> so, he thinks he's basically going insane at this point. So then he starts questioning, it's like, really, like, was the things I was doing back then really right? So he thinks like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm just, he's, he's literally, he's going crazy at this point. So he finally goes back to sleep, but another, ooh, you gotta, you gotta listen to this. A screeching squeal somewhere between an alarm's buzz and siren's wail. A sound that barely came in under ear damaging levels. Wrenched Noel from cushy oblivion and hurled him back toward earth. At the same time, a spine-scoring lightning strike burned an image of the blackbird into Noel's brain, marking Noel's mind like a dreadful brand. Noel fought to find his way back to full consciousness, but he couldn't get all the way there. He was awake enough to know he had been dragged from sleep, but that was as far as he could go. It was like something was holding him in place, clamping him into restraints in a way station between thought and no thought. He fell literally pinned to the bed. He could feel the stabbing pressure of something sharp digging into his skin at the wrists and ankles. He tried to buck off to his assailant, and, but he couldn't move at all. He was utterly paralyzed. He could feel the pressure getting stronger and stronger, pushing him deeper into his mattress. He felt like he was being compressed into nothingness, and he still tried to battle the force above him. He poured every ounce of his will into his muscles, and he grunted and strained to get free. His confinement got worse, not better. Sudden, Noel suddenly sensed the evil presence hovering over him. No, not hovering, sitting. The presence was sitting on Noel's bed, sitting on Noel. It was pressuring down on him, engulfing him, insinuating itself into every part of him. And then, with a flash of light, he was free. He busted loose from his bizarre captivity and awoke so fully when he opened his eyes, he was completely alert and he had his bat in his hands. Another, another blackbird type of vision, I guess. So if you guys actually do remember early on in the chapter, whenever you confess something, blackbird will haunt you. This is what's happening to Noel right here. So yeah, basically at this point, he's still thinking, you know, he's going very crazy at this point. So after that, you know, he goes outside to, you know, get some air, trying to, you know, make himself awake. And then literally he is saying sorry to Sam, like literally out loud. It's like, Sam, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Like that was so long of me. Like at this point, he is literally like, I guess crazy to the point where he's just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I honestly feel bad for Noel at this point. It's just like, gosh, dude, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine what Noel's going through, dude. 
I cannot. So later on, a cop finds him. He's like, oh, why are you yelling? Why are you yelling? And then, you know, Sam, or not no Sam, but Noel is, you know, trying to, you know, explain to him, uh, I guess, like, that he's apologizing or something. And then later on, he meets with Amber and, you know, has another conversation with him about, you know, about Sam. And then... He's like, how am I going to find Christine Walker? Because that's the person, you know, that he was talking about. Of the, you know, the person he bullied. And he was like, how am I going to find her? Because I think at this point now he wants to go to apologize so he can literally get this over with. And I think that's what his goal is at this moment. So he decides to go back to sleep. And this is when another thing happened. The second Noel's brainwave slowed. The blackbird appeared in a dishonored din of neeing and buzzing that was so intense it felt like a physical invasion boring into Noel's ear canal. Diabolical wings leaned over Noel menacingly, aiming its beak directly at Noel's right eye. The blackbird bent even closer. Noel knew his eye was closed because he was asleep, but in the dream world, his eyes were open to see the beak move lower and lower. At the same time, the weight ramming down on him got heavier and heavier. Noel's chest was being crushed underneath the feather mask. Even though he knew it would not be, it would not do good, no good, Noel wrangled and jerked himself back and forth trying to throw off the hideous creature. He concentrated on trying to free his legs, but that just made things worse. His legs started to spasm, and it felt like someone was trying to tear them off its body. The pain in his lungs was excruciating. The sound morphed too. The high-pitched tones abated, only to be replaced by a combination of crackling static and loud hum. Interrupting, interrupted at regular intervals by the beating zap sound that reminded Noel of the electric bug zappers his grandfather kept by his back deck, only the zap was not designed for mosquitoes. It was tuned to something for the size of a pterodactyl. Noel realized that he could no longer breathe. The weight on his chest was flattering his lung, flattening his lungs and stopping his heart. He felt like he was being dragged into some other realm, the Blackbird's realm. And as he left his world, the world he realized he had taken for granted all his life, his body began to tingle. The tingle sped up and it became vibrations so fast and powerful, it felt like every cell in his body was palpitating at a jackhammer pace. Faster and faster, his body vibrated, and it began to emit a droning sound. Brrr. Noel tried to scream, but he couldn't even use his mouth. He realized he couldn't even feel his mouth or the rest of his body. He wasn't just paralyzed, he was numb. All that left of Noel was his consciousness. His mind was still functioning fine. In fact, it was functioning too well. It was giving him a relentless rundown to system-wide failure of his body. Noel's existence receded further and further into an inky, feathered oblivion. The noise crescended, the pain intensified. Noel was sure he was on the voyage of total annihilation. And then it all stopped. So, another little blackbird vision, I guess. So, Ian, one of his friends, goes in there and he's like, Dude, are you okay? Are you okay? And he's like, Yeah, I'm fine. And... Like, he, like, he couldn't even answer the question because he was like, oh, like, mm -mm, I'm, I'm, no. And then literally, Ian said, I thought you were dying because, you know, he couldn't, I guess, hear anything. Or, like, he only heard was like a, mm, or some sort of sound. Later on, he asked Ian, it's like, hey, how can I, like, find someone, you know, to make amends with? And he's like, oh, I guess, like, just research. So... He knew that, you know, oh, actually it was Christine Wilbur that said, you know, I said Christine Walker at the beginning, um, but they had a, um, a diner. So he goes to the diner and he's like, hey, I want to make amends, you know, with your daughter because, you know, I bullied her. And, and he tells her that his daughter is at a, like, at another college. And he goes to the college where Christine is at and, you know, he's hesitant at first and then he knocks on the door and Christine's like, you know, how, how can I help you? And Noel's like, I'm the person who, do you not remember me? And she, you know, she replies, well, no. And then he's like, you know, I'm the person who bullied you. And, and he tells her, I'm really, really sorry. And at the end, she forgives him, which is really, really nice. And also too, it does say in the book that she has changed from, you know, from the person that she was and, you know, Noel is, like, 
Christine basically says, you know, after the whole bullying, I decided, you know, to change myself. And she's, you know, a lot more confident person. And Noel, after, you know, Noel makes up with Christine, he felt nothing. Like he always had like a scent, like a presence near him, but he said no more feathers. The hallway was silent and basically his headache was gone. And then everything, like all the pressure just released from him. Then he gets a phone call and he grins and he's like, I'm on my way. Basically, Sam was all right all this time. And yeah, Sam was like at some sort of, you know, like area, like creek. And he was like, yeah, I was unconscious for days and then people found me. And yeah, pretty much Sam is all right. And you know, Noel apologizes to Sam and <laughs> literally Sam says, well, you know how I told you about that I was bullied? And he said, well, I got revenge on the bullies <laughs> for, um, for, you know, people who bullied him. And it, it was like in his freshman year and <laughs> it, it was, it was just awesome. So they went to get a pizza and in the end with this long story, maybe I'll tell you sometime. The blackbird will make you tell, Sam said. Noel's heart stuttered, but then Sam laughed. So yeah, in the end, Sam was all right. And yeah, that's the end of the chapter. <laughs> um, yeah. Next one is Real Jake. Again, really, really good chapter. And also too, if I mess up on some parts in the summary, I really apologize. I haven't done these in a while. So if I messed up on anything, please let me know down in the comment section below. But yeah, really, really good story. Really good ending as well. Luckily no one died, but yeah, Blackbird is a really, really creepy um, character in this story. And yeah, basically in the end, I guess it does show like a, um, like a lesson learned type of thing. It's like, if you bully someone, make amends and everything will be better. Something like that. But yeah, anyway, that is gonna be it for today's video. Again, if I messed up on anything and in this video, I very much apologize. Like I said, has been a while since I've done these, but yeah, anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.